What's up, you dirty dogs? This is my ultimate guide to Ghost of Tabor. If you're a beginner or somebody who's been playing for a while, I'm sure you're gonna find something in this video that is helpful. This video is covering a wide range of topics, so be sure to check the video description below so you can skip ahead to what you're looking for. All right, guys, let's get into it. Let's talk about the different ways that you can play Ghost of Tabor. Currently, there are two versions. You can purchase the Quest standalone version available on the Meta Store, or you can also purchase Ghost of Tabor on Steam, which means you'll have to have a PC VR headset or connect your Quest headset with a link cable to your PC. A lot of people ask, how are the graphics so good and so smooth on my videos? That is because the better graphics are going to be the Steam version of Ghost of Tabor. Something I want to bring up though, is each version has their own game DLC packages that you can purchase. If we look at the meta store page, you can see all of the game packages listed here. It is an additional charge if you want to add one of these packages. Personally, I highly recommend that you purchase a DLC package because you can read through all of the benefits that you'll receive. If you're worried about having a rough start in the game, this is a great way for beginners to ensure they have a smooth experience. There are also DLC packages available for the Steam version of the game, so check them out. Welcome to your forever home, the bunker. After you complete the tutorial, you'll be placed here. There are many rooms to your bunker. We're gonna go on a quick tour to show you what those rooms are all about. Here we have the power room and there's only a generator in here. You'll use gas cans to fill the generator so you can turn the lights on and power your bunker. This is the trade room. Anything that you buy from the market will end up in the kiosk inside of the trade room. This is where you can actually pull items out and it does act as a storage as well. When you pull something out, it's only one item at a time. Inside the trade room, you also have a conveyor belt that you can place items on to sell. Once the item goes through the conveyor belt, use the kiosk next to it and choose a trader you would like to sell to. We'll go over the traders a little bit later, but just know that each trader is gonna pay you different amounts of money depending on the item. You can also change your mind about selling an item and hit the return button if you want it to go back to your trade room kiosk. Here is your kitchen. There are many shelves here for you to place all types of items. You can place all your foods, all your water bottles, spoons, candy bars, but you will also have a sink in here. And the only way you can use the sink is to attach a water filter to the water line down here. Food and water is super important in Ghost of Tabor. You better start collecting. Storage is pretty self-explanatory. It's no surprise that inside here, you will have access to more shelving units to place more items. I know it seems like there isn't much room right now, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. On to the bread and butter of your bunker, the armory. You'll be spending quite a lot of time in here. You have even more storage here, which includes backpack hooks and mannequins to store your armor and helmets. Inside the second door of your armory is where the magic happens. You'll have a fairly good size gun wall where you can hang up all of your weapons. This includes rifles, SMGs, pistols, hand grenades, magazines. It's pretty sweet. There's also lockers in here where you can hang even more armor pieces and helmets go up top. The star of the show is going to be the ammo crafting station. Now don't get too intimidated with this right now. I will show you in depth on how this works and then you're gonna be a pro at it. In fact, you're gonna wanna make ammo all the time. But this is where you craft ammo uh, and load your magazines. There's also a recycling bin in your armory, just in case you need to throw out some pesky items that really can't be sold. Let's head upstairs and check out the next room. This next one is also self-explanatory, but it is a firing range. Here you can test out your weapons that you've acquired out on the field and uh, have fun doing so. Just keep in mind that you are using your ammunition here. If you don't want to lose your ammo, I suggest going back to the tutorial field. You can use as much ammo as you want. Next up, the intel room. 
super important for Ghost of Tabor. In this room is where you make money. That's right, passive money just by playing the game. But you will need to collect graphics cards, one of the most valuable pieces of equipment in the entire game. Slot as many graphics cards as you can, and as you slowly upgrade this room, you can even include more mining racks so you can add more graphics cards. Each graphics card that's added, you will be gaining even more money per minute that you play the game. It starts out slow, but believe it or not, ramps up quite a bit as you collect more. And now we've got the nursery. Yes, believe it or not, you can grow those <clears throat> plants. Yes, sir. You can buy seeds from the market, which I'll show you later. But those seeds you can then plant in the soil. And over here, you'll have a water bed that you can use your water bottles to fill. Once the plants are fully grown, you can actually harvest the plants. You can turn the final product into NRSs. For all of you doctors out there who want to start a business selling NRSs, this is for you. And last but not least, you have the med block. This is the room that you would take the fully grown plants to. There is going to be a machine here eventually that you will turn into NRSs. However, you'll need to upgrade the med block to get access to that. The machine you will see on the table in here, you can place toilet paper in this machine and actually make bandages out of it. So if you see toilet paper out in the field, make sure you bring it back home. Let's look at the market and an overview of all the traders. Open up your menu and select Tabor Market to teleport. Starting first with the Tabor Rehab Hospital. You can purchase consumables, which include water bottles, energy drinks, and food. So this includes candy bars, energy chews, and cans of food. You can also purchase the NRS, which is a medical pen, but yeesh, look at that price tag. If you see these out in the field, try and extract with them. Shiro ammunition for all your ammunition needs. As you can imagine, this is where you're going to go to get supplies to make your own ammo at home. You'll need brass and a gunpowder, and the gunpowder is in different categories. Full metal jacket, tracer, and the famous armor piercing. And that's pretty much all that's here. Minty Tactical is where you get all of your gear, and we're talking what fits on your body. Minty will sell you armor, helmets, night vision to go on those helmets, and backpacks to hold on to all of your loot. The Merchant of Death. This trader deals specifically in weapons that come from DLC packages of the game. You will only have access to these packages if you have purchased a DLC pack. I highly recommend that you do purchase a pack, because one, it helps the developers of the game, and two, it's pretty sweet to have access to these weapons. So. Depending on where you bought your game, if you bought it on standalone, you'll want to check the Meta Store for DLC packages. And if you bought the game on Steam, Steam will also have a DLC section. I mean, come on, look at the John Wick guns. Absolutely sweet. Spectre Guns and Accessories. This is where you're going to get those things. These are going to be all the basic weapons in the game. However, they're on a tiered system. So depending on your trader level, you will only have access to certain weapons until you level up. But this is where you can purchase weapons, magazines, and attachments. Head through these double doors, and we're on the last two traders in the market. Jiri's Euro Mart. You'll go here for some bunker resources. You can still buy things to make ammo here, all of it's the same price, but you will find gas cans, water filters, and seeds for growing. Alright, last but not least, Merrick. Depending on what DLC pack you purchase for the game, that's going to determine what rooms you already have unlocked when you start the game. If you see a locked room, all you have to do is go to Merrick and purchase that room, so that way it's available to you. For example, if you only have the first door to Armory 1, that's all you get for storage. You can find the requirements to opening up a new door by hovering your hand over each room. It'll cost money and require you to be a certain character level to purchase that door. Don't worry, you level up your character by playing the game and killing scavs and players. One more thing. The utility tab that you see here increases the efficiency of each room. 
For example, if you were to increase the utility level of the generator room, the less gas it will take to run the generator for longer. Pretty important stuff. We're heading back to the market so I can show you how to set up favorites. At some point, you will have to buy a weapon from the market. It gets super annoying to go back to the market each time to purchase the weapon. I'm going to show you an easy way to set up a favorite so you can buy it right from inside your bunker. We're going to use this M16 as an example. If you wanted to buy just the M16, you would grab your scanner, which is in your pistol holster by the way, and you would scan the item and then you can go to checkout and buy the item. But there's a more convenient way. Let's set up a favorite for this M16. Let's start this over. Grab the weapon that you'd like and put it into your non-dominant hand. Then go back to the kiosk and choose the magazine category. Now grab the magazine that fits that weapon, insert the magazine, rack the weapon so that way there's a round in the chamber, and now grab your scanner and scan the weapon. Go back to the kiosk one more time and head to checkout. You will see a little star button next to the weapon. If you check this star, that means you've favorited the weapon. You can buy it right now if you'd like to. Otherwise, you can actually head back to your bunker. Go inside your trade room and go straight to the kiosk. And this is where you will use the favorite tab. The favorite tab will hold all of the favorites that you have chosen. Please beware though, there is a maximum limit on how many favorites you can have. But now you're able to buy items straight from your bunker without having to go to the market. Anytime I want to get a loaded M16, I just go to my favorites and hit buy and it shows up inside my terminal. You can use this favorite system for everything. You can favorite backpacks, armor, food, NRSs, any item that's in the shop can be used as a favorite. This comes in handy when you're dealing with armor. Armor does not come with magazine pouches on them already. You either have to find them in the wild and attach them inside your bunker, or if you're a rich man, you can just set up a favorite to have armor with a magazine pouch on it already. Same concept. At Minty, find armor that you like, keep it in your offhand, then choose the category for the primary ammo pouches, grab a pouch, put it on the vest in any configuration that you'd like. When you're done, take your scanner, scan it, set it as a favorite. You can now purchase armor that's ready to go right from your bunker. I hope you guys are liking these tips. I'm actually working on a second video where I'm gonna cover how to make more money where to look for graphics cards, and how to set up gunstock calibration for those of you who are struggling with that. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I will try to address them in a future video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.